I am not awake right now. I've been up for a number of hours, I went back to sleep, and now I am doing my stream because I promised I would and I felt like shit about the way I treated Mexico the last time I did this. So let's get into this, shall we? We're just diving headfirst in. I took some notes. Today we're actually here to answer a very simple question. What is the best thing we can do for Mexico? Now the best thing we can do for Mexico, hands down, is show some fucking love. These are our neighbors we're talking about. These are respectful and beautiful people embroiled in the death of their country. And I'm not talking about fucking immigrants. I'm not talking about fucking illegals, this, that, and the other. I'm talking about the homegrown people from Mexico who have the soul amidst living on top of a mountain of trash as their foundation with walls made of billboards and fucking broken tin roofs will break off a piece of their house to make a table so they can serve you some food. These Mexicans, the Mexican people who are so stoic, who are so strong, that they won't let you see just how hurt they are. Hurt by what? Well, the fact that their country is, in fact, a shithole. And before you call me a racist for calling it that, Take a moment to think about your own bigotry of low expectations for treating them like children as the United States has for so long. Why is Mexico a shithole? Well, there's a number of fucking reasons and we're going to go through them here before we get into the details of how we as the United States can actually help them. Because knowing these things is extremely important. First and foremost, the most obvious thing that you can do for Mexico in understanding is actually know what cartels are major players. LT, I need you to chill out. Thank you, baby. So there are a number of cartels, but they really boil down to two major groups. And even the, even the uh, cartels within these larger syndicated groups are fucking nightmares to keep track of because there's tons of infighting and there's tons of wars that will just break out due to territory disputed between these groups who are together. But for simplicity's sake, we're going to talk about two groups, the Sinaloa Cartel and Los Zetas. The Sinaloa Cartel started off back in the 1970s as a contraband gang but they developed into growing their own opium and marijuana before growing further into acting as traffickers for uh, Pablo Escobar and the Medellin cartel back in the 1970s. Led by Joaquin Guzman, better known as El Chapo, or for those of you who don't speak Spanish, Shorty, uh, who might as well have been the bastard dictator for life of Mexico up until last year when he was arrested and extradited to the United States. This, this, this cartel, this syndicate of criminals, of psychopaths, waged war not only on the American border, but the Guadalajara cartel, the Juarez cartel, and the Los Zetas, not to mention every other gang in the area that they could, until they rose to power, covering a good half of Mexico, in the northwest corner, covering the northwest corner all the way over to about a hundred miles east of the Texan, the, uh, the most uh, western point of Texas, all the way down far past Baja California to the, the uh, Knights Templar territory. Uh, their borders are within 50 miles of Mexico City and they control multiple states in Mexico. And for those of you who don't realize this, yes, Mexico has states. They're a federated nation, not too dissimilar from the United States. And as of 
2010, it is strongly understood by governments across the world that the Sinaloa cartel has its hooks in every rank of government, save possibly the president. And even then, it doesn't really matter when every enforcing body might as well be part of that cartel, that syndicate. Then you have the other group. You have Los Zetas. These are the gangsters uh, to whom MS-13, which Trump talks about a lot, are beholden. They are a much more terrifying group in the fact that they were originally a paramilitary group within the Gulf Cartel, a cartel that was allied with and supported by the Sinaloa Cartel, and made up of 37 members of the retire of members of retired Mexican Army Special Forces and Mari Mexican Marines, who, after the 1999 arrest of the Gulf Cartel leader Osiel Guillen, saw the opportunity to strike out on their own, to make their own little piece of the action, to exercise their control. Led by Heriberto Lescano, the group applied their understanding of Mexican and U.S. military tactics and strategy to build their own domain of drug trafficking, weapons trafficking, and human trafficking throughout Northeast Mexico. All the land along the U.S. border that isn't controlled by the Sinaloa cartel is controlled by Los Zetas, and their control spreads far down onto the Gulf, the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. Notorious for targeting civilians for no other reason than showing their innate cruelty, Los Zetas is well known for mass murder, including the mass murder of 72 Mexicans in San Fernando in 2010. They've even expanded their operations to include extortion, the bootlegging of CDs and DVDs, and having stolen entire oil pipelines in Mexico. And if you think I'm talking out my ass, maybe you should do your homework instead of being stupid about Mexico and thinking that they're just some fucking shithole. Actually understand with what we're dealing here. Now, the cartels aren't the only problem we ha that they have. Another huge problem for Mexico is us, the United States. We have done nothing to benefit them that hasn't in turn bit us in the ass. Los Zetas, these members, this original group of 37 paramilitary operators, former members of the Mexican Army, Special Forces, etc., we trained them. The skills and tactics of Los Zetas that make them so terrifying, despite being so much smaller in comparison to the Sinaloa cartel, is due to the fact that it was Green Berets and you and Marine Corps Force Recon who trained these people back in the 70s and 80s as a means of fighting against the cartels, as a means of being a supporting army and neighbor, and in turn, provided us with an enemy right on our borders that is undoubtedly more terrifying than ISIS ever was. This training was then reinforced and made standard operating procedure by Los Zetas and expanded upon in the first decade with the aid of our, own, our very own Bureau of At Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms under Project Gunrunner, better known as these days the Fast and Furious scandal. Now, what was Fast and Furious? Well, from 2006 to 2011, right up until the moment American citizens were found dead at crime scenes, in shootouts between the U.S. Border Patrol and cartel members, cartel members who were using the weapons we provided to them, the ATF was purposely allowing licensed firearms dealers to sell weapons to members of Los Zetas and Sinaloa both, and what was supposed to be a means of tracking these guns back to cartel leaders for the purpose of arresting them. However, after the sale of more than 2,000 rifles, shotguns, sidearms, and God knows how many rounds of ammunition, 
it was discovered that only 700 weapons had actually been accounted for, had been tracked, and that the ATF had completely shat the bed, much like they did with Waco, and much like they did in so many other cases. The rest remained in the hands of crime syndicates, which used them to terrorize not only rival gangs and politicians, but civilians themselves, and turned Mexico into a war zone. And if our ATF wasn't problem enough, the entire reason that these gangs have so much interest in our border is because we, as the United States, make up 90% of the market that they sell to. We do all of their drugs. Just fucking all of it. They might sell in small amounts to South American countries. They might sell in small amounts shipping overseas to Europe. But 80 to 90% of the cocaine, the heroin, the marijuana, and the methamphetamines that they produce are traveling north to be sold in the single largest market for illicit drugs in the world, the United States. See, most people don't actually need them to do this for them. Because we had our war on drugs, we made their lives easier. We created a black market so profitable that we couldn't even stop them. Not that we actually had any interest in doing so. The battles that occur along our southern border, and they are battles in the war sense, serve also as large-scale distractions for coyotes, or people whose job it is to smuggle humans across the border for prices ranging between $5,000 and $20,000 USD depending how much heroin or cocaine you're willing to carry up your ass into the United States. Yes, even if you pay these men to get you into the United States illegally, they will expect you to mule these drugs in for them, because these coyotes, they're not anyone's friends. They are members of the cartels who have a very special set of gifts. It's like the movie Taken, except in the exact opposite fucking direction. And if that wasn't bad enough, all of this is allowed to continue for a very simple fucking reason. It has been the policy of the United States government since the early 90s to maintain an open border or as virtual an open border as possible for the entire purpose of giving Mexico what they call a safety valve. They are allowing those who could be revolutionaries. They are allowing those who would fight for their country, for their sovereignty, to instead believe that there is no hope for Mexico. And the only hope that they could possibly have is to enter the country illegally and take slave labor jobs for pennies on the market value dollar for labor and keeping a corrupt government stable and in power, as well as in debt to us and international banks, instead of letting this country break down into the revolution it so desperately needs. And if you think that's offensive or scary, well, congratulations, you're the fucking racist because you're trying to keep Mexico in a fucking hole. You're trying to teach these people that there's nothing that they can do but be subservient to us. You're not giving them the room to actually grow, to be adults, and take their country back from these gangs, or dismantle the gangs, or legalize drugs, regulate drugs, and tax drugs for the purpose of rebuilding their economy above, on top of. But this isn't the only problem we're certainly not the only problem Mexico has, because even if we had done none of this, even if we had just played stupid like the Mexican government has for nigh on 40 years, Mexico would still have one of the most corrupt governments in the Americas, North or South. 
beat out only by countries like Argentina. As up until the year 2000, Mexico was dominated every election by one party, an ironically named Institutional Revolutionary Party, a member of the Socialist International, which, as far back as the 1970s, was more corrupt than the Catholic churches to whom they were so t tightly connected. <clears throat> and this PRI, or Institutional Revolutionary Party, used vote-buying vote tactics and other forms of voter fraud to remain in power and obtained the money required to do this more and more from their relationship with the Medellin cartel and later the Sinaloa cartel. In the year 2000, after the loss of support from these cartels, a new political party was finally able to break the 70-year hold that the PRI held on the country, and the Party for National Action, or PAN, finally was able to take power. And just like their fucking predecessors, their pockets had been lined with the cash of blood and drug money to make sure that they were owned as well. In the last 40 years, there has not been one Mexican president who hasn't been under serious investigation for corruption, if not more, including the current president, Enrique Peña Nieto, who, to be completely fair, is nowhere near as bad as people like Vincente Fox and people who came before him, who saw the only option that they have was to do nothing, to do the most un-Mexican thing you can imagine, and pretend like nothing was wrong, and not stand up for themselves, to be cowards in the face of their country, transforming further and further into the very shithole that Donald Trump called it, and everyone lost their minds about. However, to their credit, in 2006, with the election of Felipe Calderón, after two decades of ignoring the murders, the turf wars, the legal impunity of the cartels, which we'll be getting to in a moment, and the first real action against these cartels was taken, finally began on December 11th, 2006, with what we call the Mexican drug war. Now, what was this drug war? Well, it all began with Operation Michoacan. Mi Mi uh, Michoacan. I I'm terrible at pronouncing shit. Fuck off. But on 11th of December 2006, Calderon deployed 6,500 troops to his own country, in his own borders, into the state of Michoacan, in a rather obviously named Operation Michoacan. And over the, ne the five years that would follow, from 2006 to 2011, these deployed troop numbers would escalate to 25,000 soldiers total, not including law enforcement officers who were working alongside them both to lead in the capture and arrest of over 11,500 people related to the cartels and organized crime. And up to this point, this day, 45,000 troops deployed on Mexico's own soil. On a yearly basis, between 50 and 400 federal officials in Mexico are either fired for corruption or killed for not taking part in the corruption. And despite this body count, which exceeds the body counts of Iraq and the Afghanistan wars from 2008, or from 2001 to 2008 combined, Mexico is still considered to be under the control of one of the two major cartels, depending on the region. And every time a lieutenant or leader in these syndicate groups dies, they are rapidly replaced without much, if any, effect to the syndicated cartels as a whole. Even with figures like El Chapo extradited to the United States, these cartels main pa maintain power over their regions as well as over police chiefs, politicians, the television media, and even regiments within the very military fighting against them. 
We are looking at a country that is corrupt. We are looking at a country that has failed, and it has failed because we made it that way. And we assured that it would stay that way to prevent an even larger, less predictable conflict from existing on our border. You know who else does that? Russia. We're no better than them. And when it comes to Mexico, we really, really fucked them over. As of 2016, the reports published by the Center for Impunity and Justice Studies finds that less than 10% of crimes in Mexico are even reported, and only 1% of crimes are actually punished within Mexico for multiple reasons. Primarily, most people either have no faith in the authorities whatsoever, or they uh, have only faith in the cartel lieutenants who control the town in which they live and don't even recognize the federal government as their government on the local and personal level. Out of the 202 nations in the world rated in the Corruption Perception Index, Mexico ranks 131st, tied with Russia, the Ukraine, Iran, Kazakhstan, and Nepal. Mexico's national debt is 10 trillion pesos, or $500 billion USD, with those debts being guaranteed by the United States, and in turn, making them wholly dependent on the United States in order to take out loans from international banks. The cartels hold most of the power, despite the might of the Mexican federal police and military, to the point where you can't even speak about cartel members on social media without retribution being executed against you, and good God do I mean executed against you. Did you know that YouTube has just as big a problem with honor killings and decapitations taking place in Mexico and being aired on YouTube as they do with ISIS, and arguably more so these days? I bet you fucking didn't. But then again, most people don't know shit about Mexico, nor do they have any interest in knowing shit about Mexico. I spoke a lot, a lot of shit yesterday, and this stream is not going to be nearly as long as yes, as excuse me, Saturdays. But I had to, I had to explain all of these details for one very simple reason. The only thing we, as the United States, can do is actually treat them like fucking adults. Actually, show some goddamn fucking respect for our neighbor, instead of constantly making them our slaves, our children, and treating them like children to the point where they will never take the time to grab their destiny for themselves. We need to pull out of trade deals just like Donald Trump wants to, not because we want to screw over Mexico, but because Mexico needs time to either sink or swim. They need time to build up their own personal revolution and not this institutional revolutionary bullshit that they have which has kept the Mexican people placated and lied to and encouraging them to believe the United States when we tell them they don't have any options down there you should try and get up here illegally even though we're going to treat you like a criminal even though we're going to make you our slaves and we have to put up the fucking wall Putting up this wall will do wonders for Mexico. It will do Mexi more for Mexico than it will ever do for us. Not because they won't be able to cross the wall, but because it will reduce the options that they have for crossing the wall and allow us to be able to predict such actions and take swift and immediate response to attempts to cross whether by land or by sea. It will force more people to actually claim asylum in an American consulate in Mexico. It will force more people to cross at ports of entry instead of wherever they fuck they want, 
taking advantage of being taken advantage of by criminals, raped and possibly killed along the way for not playing along with their drug muling or prostituting ideas for these people that they so lovingly move into our country. We cannot help them make these decisions. We cannot help them decide whether they live or die. That is up to Mexicans. And by being the fucking... You want racism? Racism is looking at Mexico and saying they can't help themselves. They're too weak. They're too stupid. The only option we have is to open our borders because we're so much better than them. Let me tell you right now, we're not. We're fucking horrid to them. And they deserve better from their greatest trading partner. Now, once the wall is erected and once the trade deals are suspended, it's going to take a little bit of time for Mexico to build up its revolutionary population. But such a revolutionary population is necessary if they ever want to get out from under the absolute fucking death grip control that these two cartels, these crime syndicates, have over them. They need to build up their own pride again because Ameri because I'll tell you right now, America, Mexicans are proud people. Mexicans are stoic people. They're not afraid of a goddamn thing. Not even these gangs. And they deserve our respect for their culture. Because not only are they stoic, as I said in the beginning, they're very loving and family-oriented people. And when their families can't tear themselves apart out of fear, the only choice they'll have is do or die. And once they choose to do, because I can assure you, Mexico loves itself to do instead of just dying. We have to be strong enough to let Mexico as a state fail and completely fail, not sit around floating in this, this limbo of governmental corruption. Because only once they fail can we reach out a hand and say, if you allow us to forgive the debt that we guarantee for you against the United States Bank, against the international banks, will we be able to come in with our military and sweep away these terrorists, these drug traffickers, these human traffickers, not because we want to take Mexico for ourselves, but because we want to protect ourselves from being invaded by them as well. We want to stop the funding for MS-13 and other Mexican gangs who operate along the southern border, stretching all the way up into Los Angeles, stretching all the way up into Phoenix and El Paso and Austin, Texas. I think Razor Fist put it best when he say they didn't take our jobs, they took our fucking cities. And we have to recognize this fact. We have to swallow the horrid fucking pill that they did so under the watchful eye of the ATF providing and training them with guns, 2,000 weapons, with American people who are willing to stand on the far side of the border just to buy drugs at a cheap price, being smuggled in by people who don't speak the fucking language, don't have anywhere to fucking go, but will work a field job, a slave job, just to survive. Once we've forgiven their debts and assisted them with killing off uh, the Sinaloa cartel and the uh, Los Zetas cartel, assisting them, not doing it for them, in the way that we did with, with uh, Syria and Iraq under General Mattis, we then immediately leave, forgive their debts, and reopen trade negotiations on a one-on-one -on -one basis. 
in order to show them that we respect them, that we are proud to be their neighbor, as we always should have been, instead of thinking the best option was this safety valve bullshit. More than anything, we must show respect for them as neighbors and friends and stop using them as a source of slave labor, a source of cheap drugs. And if they choose of their own volition to legalize, regulate, and tax drugs, we have to stand by them so that they can re rapidly rebuild their economy and control their situation and take a hold of the destiny that they have chosen for themselves because they have to choose for themselves. We can't do it for them. I ain't slept in more than 24 hours and I need this fucking hot in this room. I love you all. You guys are wonderful. Be well, you magnificent fucks. I'll catch you tomorrow.